Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Anita from Ketogenic Woman and today I have with me a guest. Uh, this is Coach Bronson. Welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for, for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming to have this chat. Um, I have some questions for you, but I think we should probably start just in case some of the people that are here watching this, they may not know who you are. And I am wondering a couple of things. Like This is sort of a two-part question. Okay. How did you get to carnivore? Mm -hmm. And how did you become a fitness coach? Oh my goodness! That's how much we only have an hour, right? How long do That's we have? That's right. We only have an hour, or so and I have okay. lots of questions. <laughs> All right. So um, let's start with they kind of start in the same place, um, and that that's with my personal journey. So from from my journey of being in my mid thirties, realizing that I was not healthy, I was not in shape, I was not living the, I, I was not the physical, my physical body, my, my condition did not match the image that I had in my head. So I saw myself as being young and fit and active and in shape and healthy and all these things. And then I was kind of confronted with the reality that I was overweight, sick, depressed, and not at all living the lifestyle that I had in my head. And I had to make a decision. What am I doing? What am I going to do about this? Either I accept it and just keep deteriorating or I do something to change it and, and change my life. And I decided I have to do something. I can't, I could not justify being sick. I could not justify as a father, particularly, right? I had four kids and it was my kids who kind of brought this to my attention inadvertently. My daughter took a picture of me at the beach. I saw that picture and I was like, how I just, I can't, that just, there's no way I can't be that person. Um, and it really just kind of kickstarted the whole process. Now, I'm 51 right now. So this started in my mid thirties. So this is a not, this is not an overnight thing. This is a long journey. Okay. And that's where I say both the carnivore just, you know, lifestyle and the fitness coaching lifestyle are part of that journey. Um, I started in fitness. The first steps that I did was, Hey, I need to figure out how to get in shape. And for me being in shape meant exercise. So I started looking for ways to do that. Um, within a couple of years, I was introduced to CrossFit. I started doing CrossFit, fell in love with it, started learning about what actual fitness meant and how it, it's more about quality of life and your physical independence than it is how you look. It's not about a six pack. It's not about big bulging muscles. It's about being able to do what you want to do when you want to do it under your own terms. That's what fitness is about. So that's really where I got exper that experience. And that's got me fired up. I need to do something with this. I need to learn more about this. And that's where I started coaching. I was coming up on 20 plus years of being in IT, feeling like I needed a change. I needed to do something different. This was, you know, the twilight of my career, so to speak, uh, and got into to the fitness thing, started coaching, opened up my own gym. So I left IT, opened up a gym, ran a gym for a few years. Uh, during that process of being a CrossFit gym owner, I was introduced to carnivore because here's the thing, even being a gym owner, owning a CrossFit gym, having done CrossFit for years at this time, I had started going the opposite direction. I was working out, right? I was working out all the time. I was super in shape. I could do all these things. My physical independence had improved, but I had never really focused on the nutrition side of things. So I still had irritable bowels. I still had urgent bowels. I still had acne. I still was depressed. I was starting to gain weight again, right? So another thing happened. This is six or seven years in. I'm in my uh, early 40s now. And uh, I had a pool party at one of my clients' house. Now, here I am owning a gym. I'm supposed to be helping people get in shape. We have a pool party. I see a picture of me at the pool on the diving board. And I could not tell the difference between that picture and the picture from when I was 36 years old on the beach that my daughter took. I'm like, there's six, seven, eight years now in between this. What is going on? I, it doesn't look, nothing looks like it's changed. Right? So it really got me going, okay, what is happening? You know, what am I missing? What's the missing piece? Around that time, I was introduced to the concept of elimination diets. So I did a 21 day, no alcohol diet right? I didn't change my food. I didn't change my exercise. I didn't change anything else. All I did was I stopped drinking alcohol for 21 days. 
And by stop drinking alcohol, I mean, I would have a glass of whiskey, because I'm a whiskey guy, a glass of whiskey three or four nights a week. So it's not like I was drinking a six pack. I wasn't binging on the weekends. I wasn't going out and getting plastered. I would have a glass. I'd have dinner, sit down, watch TV, have a glass of whiskey, get ready for bed, go to bed. That was it. Three or four nights a week. Not doing that for three weeks, 21 days, I lost 10 pounds of fat. Wow. (laughs) Okay. And it wasn't weight. It was fat. I have an in-body composition scanner at my gym. I was doing body composition scans regularly. My lean mass stayed the same. Everything else stayed the same. It was 10 pounds of body fat that disappeared in three weeks. I was like, what is going on? Okay. There's something with, there's something, some connection between what I'm putting in my mouth and what's happening to my body. Mm -hmm. And that's where then I was shortly, shortly after that introduced to carnivore, decided to try that. And that's where everything absolutely just came together and changed. All of the issues that I had from a performance perspective, I had injuries, I had inflammation, I had all the the irritable bowel, urgent bowels went away, acne went away, depression went away, everything changed when I combined the two. So that's kind of a short short version of a very long story. That's, well, that's that's amazing. Um, So you have been carnivore now then for a few years. Um, in May of next year, it'll be six years. Okay, wow. Uh, I first became aware of you through Kelly Hogan's channel. Yeah, uh, yeah, Love Kelly. I, yeah. Me too. I I saw you. Uh, she interviewed you, and mm-hmm. uh, and I think it was probably about a month after that when I was at KetoCon, I recognized you there in the yeah. lineup at <laughs> Terry Black's, which uh, has the best barbecue. I think yes. uh, my friend and I went there for every meal that <laughs> okay that's, while that's, we were there. That's a lot of line waiting. Yes, yes. Uh, but the line the line did go quick. Yeah. So so that was kind of fun. I may or may not have embarrassed myself fangirling a bit, but <laughs> you know how it goes, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but so then when I got back um, and I started, I had just started in on an exercise journey then. I mean, yeah. I've I mean, I have been sedentary my entire adult life until okay. until I started taking coaching from uh, Kelly Hogan. I was I've, I am still in her monthly uh, group coaching sessions. Awesome. Fantastic, yeah. And she's she's very into her exercise now, mm-hmm. uh, and and so that's what you guys were talking about. Yeah, I hope so, I had something to do with that because. Because yeah. I love what she's doing with things now. It's fantastic. She's a huge fan of yours. She she That's she brings awesome. she you. brings you up in the coaching sessions and okay, and directs people towards you. So so that's great. But then I started watching uh, a couple of your videos, and mm-hmm. that's when I ran into you and your mom. Yay! <laughs> and yeah, so I I can't get down on my knees. I have I have a knee injury that I've been dealing with for ten years, actually more okay. than ten years, probably twelve years. Mm-hmm. And so I wanted to do wall push ups because. Uh, Kelly had said that wall push-ups were really good to do if you can't do them on the floor. Well, I found that video of you and your mom doing wall push-ups and realized I was doing it all wrong. (laughs) And from that day forward, I've been doing them correctly and I can feel it in the places that I'm supposed to feel it. So that's awesome. uh, Yeah, I I just wanted to thank you for that, for for doing that. Um, But so that, but I just I do want to talk about a little bit more about this because uh, I then found a video of you and your mom, and I also found a video. Well, I'm going to get to that one in a minute, but but first of all, <laughs> okay. first of all, your mom. Yeah. Uh, I was blown away, and I'm going to link that video in in this below so that because many of my uh, followers, mm-hmm. uh, according to YouTube analytics. Uh, over 80% of them are 55 year old and up and they're okay. mostly women. And yeah. so they are dealing with things like your mom was dealing with osteoporosis, thyroid mm-hmm. issues. Mm-hmm. Uh, they also are dealing with being sedentary, mm-hmm. trying to figure out how to 
do something after all these years of, yeah. you know, all the damage. Um, I mean, I myself spent my whole life being sedentary and and weighing uh, well over uh, 320 pounds. And mm-hmm. so it's through keto and carnivore, you know, that I've that I've lost 145. But exercise was just never something that I thought I could do. That's and the key right there. Yes. That statement yes. right there is the big change that people need to think about. Yep. Exactly. And and so that's why I'm glad we're talking because I get the question all the time. And, yeah. and watching that video with you and your mom, she said that she basically went from no exercise to now Zero. she she does amazing Zero. i mean i was i she was naming exercises in that video that i'd never heard of uh, <laughs> so um she's reversed osteoporosis and yep. halted the progression of her hypo, hypothyroidism i can barely say that yep. word yep. She's, I, she's she's still on medication for the hypothyroid yeah, but it's, yeah. it's significantly reduced she yes. doesn't need nearly as much as she used to be yes yeah. yeah so so how is she doing now is she still exercising she's doing great yeah she's still exercising she actually had a uh, 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 about god it's probably want to say it's about eight months ago she had a hernia so she had surgery for that got it repaired she's coming back she told me a couple of weeks ago she's like I'm almost back to lifting what I used to lift before it. So she's having a blast. She's getting back into it. Um, her biggest concern with her with the hernia surgery had nothing to do with the hernia. It was how long is it going to be before I can start lifting again? Wow. Isn't that, that amazing? That was her biggest concern. Like, I don't want to have to wait. I want to just get back to it. I'm like, Mom, you got to take it easy. So, um, you know, she, she turned 69 this year. She's almost 60 or she's almost 70. Um, and, you know, to see her go from somebody who literally had never done anything physical to somebody who is gets depressed and feels bad about things like her 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 mood is I won't say it's controlled by or run by but it is definitely impacted if she goes too long without being able to physically express herself and she does that in the gym Right. There's a there's a there's a level of stress relief. There's a level of confidence. There's a level of um, reaffirming your physical independence through exercise that she gets a lot of satisfaction and contentment from being able to say, I can do hard things and prove to herself on a regular basis that she can do hard things. So it's fantastic. It's it's so amazing to be in a position to watch her go through that change, but also to be part of it is a whole nother level. Yeah. Of being able to say that I've been able to to impact her like that. Yeah. So how how much has she been an influence on you and your life in this journey for you? You know, being oh carnivore and so in in the in, it's really I think the biggest thing, and this is something that we talk about in my family a lot. It's one of our key phrases because it was the thing that she said to us all the time growing up. Right. We'd get ready for school. We'd go head to school. And she would tell me and my brother and my sister, she would say, work hard and become a leader. That was how she sent us off for the day every day. Um, And that, I think, subconsciously set me up, particularly, I can't speak for my brother and sister, but set me up to, to realize that the things that I'm doing matter. And if I'm going to do that and fulfill that, so that make that self-fulfilling process of working hard, become a, becoming a leader, what other people think doesn't matter. Yeah. This is working for me. And in order to lead and help other people, because I'm passionate about helping other people find what their solution, um, I have to figure out what's working and help other people figure out what's going to work for them. So she's been hugely impactful in that process. Um, also from the uh, her willingness to support me and be my guinea pig. That's been really, that's been really a big piece of the process with, with our relationship. Um, she was my first personal training client. She was the first person that ever signed up for a personal training session with me. And so I've been working with her in some capacity as a trainer and as a coach, not just her son for almost 10 years now. Right. So, so her willingness to say, yeah, I'll try carnivore. Yeah. I'll try this new workout. Yeah. Give me this new program you put together. Oh, what's that exercise? Let's go figure that out. Like she's whatever, let's try it. 
But even more impactful than that is she's now at a point where she can do that. Right? She can say, hey, yeah, you, want, you got this new exercise or new workout program? Send it to me. I'll try it out. And there, it, we were past the, I don't know if I can do it. I need to learn the movement. I, it's like, okay, I can, if I don't know the movement, I'll figure it out. Yeah. There's that, that, that release of fear of trying new things is gone. Such a such an inspiring story, and and yeah. so I, I I was so happy to have run across that that video. Mm -hmm. So for women, um, you know, being that my audience is mostly women, yeah. Do you think that we are getting enough protein in our not diets? usually, <laughs> not usually. So your your audience is mostly women. Ninety nine yes. percent of my clientele of all of the people. I think I have two guys that I work with most. Of, most of my clientele, most of my, same with you, you know, my algorithm, all my analytics yeah. from all my social media platforms, yeah. um, over 80% of my following on social media is women over 45, 99% of my clients are women over 45. Okay. Um, so I have been, that's what I, that's you guys, that's who I work with. That's awesome. where most of my experience comes from. Yeah. Um, in that over the past 10 years or more of working with that demographic, uh, no, most women are not getting a, most women are not getting enough food in general and enough nutrition yes. in general. So we can talk about the common things, the top things that I see that women are doing. And I hate to use the word wrong, but not to the best, not, not making, not making the best choices. And a lot of it's based on social pressure and what they've been taught, right? Those are the two main things. So it's not anybody's fault. Okay. We're going to re-educate a little bit. And that's, that's what I do. I like to re-educate. So most likely not getting enough protein, or we could just classify that as under eating in general, right? So just not getting enough nutrition, working out too much. Oh, okay. Overworking is often a thing. And the type of work that's being done is often not muscle building. It's cardio. Yes. Or I want, it's that's, high intensity. That or was it's one high of my intensity work, too, right? So I'm glad so we're going to talk the, about that too. The switch needs to be made yeah. to building muscle First, everything else comes after that, right? Okay. So that's that's the that's the that's the number thing. There's a couple layers to that, but building muscle should be the priority, and you can't do that if you're not eating enough. No, right? So those two things that you got to eat more, which which really scares a lot of women. I, eating more is a scary thing. Yes, it's a necessary thing. Yes, right. And then the other thing is, we're gonna call it sleep, but I'm gonna say recovery slash self-care okay taking time off self-care is not selfish you have to take care of yourself you cannot improve your metabolism if you're always running your metabolism into the ground right nothing nothing builds while you're active you have to rest and take a step back that's when things get better so those are the top three things that i see most women do okay so do, do you have a method of where you help people figure out what, like, is there an easy method to figure out if you're under eating? Under eating? Yeah. So yes, yes and no. I mean, everyone's coming from a different place. So my method may be super complicated to somebody who may have never been exposed to it before, but I try really hard to make it as simple as possible. So I like to use... Uh, and I'm going to start this off by saying, I think when people are getting started, it is very beneficial to measure and track what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Because number one, if you're, you're not doing that, you don't know how what you're doing is, is affecting your body. So you have, to have, you have to have something to say, well, I did this, then this happened, right? You are your own science experiment and you can't have a science experiment without data. Yes. So we have to have data, right? If you're not tracking, you're not trying. That's the way. I, that's that's a, a little phrase that I like to have. So now that doesn't mean you have to track forever. That's what I want to caveat this with, right? Tracking is a great learning tool. It's a great tool to use when you're changing and you're making adjustments. I track when I'm trying to make an adjustment, but I don't track all the time. Right. Okay. So that's just something to think about. That makes when sense. When you're trying to make a change and improve your fitness, improve your health, okay? Because health and fitness are the same thing. That's a whole other conversation. I recommend one gram of protein or one gram of fat. If we're talking carnivore, we're not talking carbs. We're talking minimal carbs, maybe mm -hmm. five carbs or less if you could eat some eggs or cheese or something, right? Whatever. So I don't even count the carbs. 
So one gram of protein or one gram of fat per pound of lean mass. So if you, ha I recommend everybody gets a body composition scanner, right? I like InBody. That's the brand that I, that I recommend and that I, that I promote because they're, they're the best technology on the market for in body composition scanners. Um, but if you weigh 200 pounds and you have 150 pounds of lean mass, that means you're 25% body fat. You have 150 pounds of everything on your body that's not fat. So that's your bones, your muscle, water, skin, like all that other stuff. That is the amount of grams you should be eating in fat and protein per day as a starting point. Okay. If you can do that, 90% of the people that I work with will start to see body composition changes just by hitting those numbers. Okay. Now, if you don't have a body composition scan, if you're not sure what to do, then you can, uh, sometimes, you know, I have people use their goal weight. So if you weigh 250 pounds and you're trying to get to 125 or 130 or 160 or 170, whatever it is, just use that as the number you're shooting for. Okay. And for most people, that will bring them to a level of protein and fat intake that they need to maintain their body without overconsuming. It will help them fix their satiety issues. It will help them um, feel better about the food that they're eating. They'll have more energy, things like that. So that's a that's kind of a starting point. Yeah. I, I have recently uh, raised my protein levels just based Good. on some more things that I've learned along the way. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm finding that the scale is moving in the right direction again. So yeah. yes, yeah, absolutely. Very, very happy yeah. about that. Protein protein is, is um, mistakenly in the keto space, particularly and in the carnivore space too, in some cases is mistakenly underemphasized. Mm -hmm. We talk, everyone talks about getting enough fat. There's a lot of people out there that are high fat. And this is something that, that Kelly and I talked about. We yes. did a couple of videos where we talked about yeah. high fat versus high protein. Your body doesn't know if you're getting more protein or more fat. It has no idea. The ratio that we, that we have between the two is irrelevant. Your body knows I'm either getting more protein than I need, or I'm not getting enough protein. I'm getting more fat than I need, or I'm not getting enough right? That's what it knows. So we yeah. need to figure out for each of those where we're at and what's going to work best for us. Um, and protein is just as important to your metabolic function. In many ways, it's more important to your metabolic function than fat is. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, let's go to, uh, oh, this is the one thing I wanted to talk to you about as well. I mean, I can't believe I'm asking this of a fitness guy, <laughs> but I saw you do a video on menopause and sure. I, I, I know of very few men who would talk about menopause on a, on a video. Mm -hmm. So I applaud you for that. Why do you think that it is being treated like a disease that needs Ooh. medication? That is such a deep question. Wow. Um, the conspiracy theorist in me wants to say that in any opportunity that the medical establishment has to identify an abnormality and fix it with medication, it's going to take that opportunity. Okay. I think that's, I think that's really where it comes from. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a natural process. I know. <laughs> right. So pe women have been doing it for as long as women have been a lot around. So why is it now in the last 50 years that all of a sudden it's a problem? Yes. That right? needs prescription. And it's because, and part of it is because the layers upon layers of, of systemic things that have been introduced into our environment that make it worse than it should be. Right. We have seed oils. We have environmental factors, cosmetics, we have aerosols, we have uh, the, the food that we're eating, right? Processed carbs, processed food, all, all of these things, medications, birth control, like there, there's so many things that are go that go into the equation now that have made menopause so invasive, way more than it was. I think, you know, I, I can't imagine, obviously I wasn't around then, but that 300, 400, 500 years ago, that menopause was such a, a horrendous experience, right? So, you know, I don't know. I, I'm not an expert on the history of menopause, but it just seems to me like there's a lot more going on in our environment and things that are happening to us epigenetically that are, are making it worse. Um, I do know that 
Um, and I don't know if you know about this, the case study we did last year with a bunch of women who were peri and postmenopausal. Yeah. So we, we took, uh, I think we started with 30 some, we ended up with 24 by the end. Um, it was just a case study to kind of see what would happen and document the results, right? We did an eight week challenge where we took women that were peri and postmenopausal and we gave them eight weeks of exercise, functional fitness training, and eight weeks of a ketogenic diet following the guidelines that I just talked about. One to one, right? One gram of protein, one gram of fat per pound of lean mass. And we tracked their body composition. We tracked their physical performance. We tracked their symptoms and the things that they were complaining about with their issues of menopause. And after eight weeks, they were stronger, faster, better body composition, more muscle, less body fat, and their quality of life when it came to the, the menopausal factors had all improved. Oh, interesting. Right? Yeah. So I can send you the link to that. If you want to put that, oh, we can put that I in the bottom of this. To. I'll send you the yes. link to that. But yeah, we got that published. We got that published in the scientific journal. It's out there. It's out there for really? the world to see. Um, it's, it's fantastic. And it's just one example. I, I plan on doing more things like this, but it's just one example of how when you combine a ketogenic carnivore diet with fitness, everything changes. It, the, the two in combination solve so many problems. Well, and you know, I'll just give you my own anecdotal evidence for what it's for what it's worth. But uh, sure, it's I, worth a lot. I started my journey uh, low carb, and then I transitioned to keto, and and then mm -hmm. car uh, carnivore. The last I don't know about three years, but it, when I was in keto, kind of cleaning up my keto, that's when I went through menopause. But okay. I didn't know I was in menopause until my cycle stopped. I had zero symptoms. Mm -hmm. And I've had none after either. What? Like none. Like what? like I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> so it just it just struck me that it, it, how important is food to us? You know what so we important. eat. Yes. I mean you know, because by then I had cleared out so many things. I mean, it, it just blows my mind a little bit. So yeah. I'm glad you did where, that study. No, and I think you just hit on a key piece too as well that I think a lot of people miss in the conversation. That going keto or carnivore is a high percentage of success comes from what you stop eating. Yes. It's not always just, oh, I'm eating more fat and protein. That's a piece of it. That definitely plays a role. You're giving your body the things that it needs now instead of not. But changing what you're eating to do that is where a lot of the, the success comes in. Because now you're not eating the things that are causing the inflammation and stress and reducing your nutrition intake and all the other things, messing up your chemicals and hormones and satiety. And uh, there's, there's so many things that go into the stuff that you stop eating that just that in and of itself is where it's it's addition by subtraction in a lot of cases. Yes, yes, I I, I think there's a lot of truth in that. Um, I, I, just, I mean, it's it's so amazing, and I'm sure you have the same experience to walk into a grocery store and and you visit oh three spots, right? <laughs> like <laughs> the meat one. aisle. <laughs> yep, one meat. Well, I go down. I go down one aisle to get my canned sardines because I'm really oh, into those. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. that's the only aisle I go down. There's lots of other junk down that same aisle, but they there sure. is there is that. But mm -hmm. uh, it's so it's so simple. I mean, there's so many things we just don't need. So that's, that's amazing. For sure. So uh, you you touched on this when we were talking about exercise, mm -hmm. uh, cardio versus weightlifting and and you yeah. said that we should start with weights mm -hmm. um so should a woman my age <laughs> i'm 65 should a woman mm -hmm. my age be running you can it, there's nothing it, the idea of should i think um is i would i would love to, to get that out of our vocabulary I think it's more, it's more about, do you want to, do you have a need to, does it impact your quality of life? If you don't, does it impact your quality of life? If you do, what is the lifestyle that you want to live? And if the lifestyle you want to live includes being able to run, then you need to be running. Okay. Well, that's a good way to look at it. Actually. Right? A lot of my clients are at a point where for them being able to walk up and down the stairs, get up and down off the floor, 
spend a weekend with their grandkids and not feel like they got run over by a train, that's where they're at. So doing things just to improve their overall strength, resiliency, and ability to move their body is where what we focus on. Now, does that come with some other things like getting stronger? Absolutely. Does that come with other things like get, improving your flexibility? Absolutely. Does that come with the benefit of getting to a point and going, wait, I can do all these things now. I need something more to do. Yes, because you're getting better. So we can add to it. We can get heavier. We can try something new. We can expand and explore what your body can actually do. So I think starting where the best thing that anyone can do is getting started is identify the things that you aren't able to do that you want to do and do something so that those things are no longer a limiting factor in your life. I, uh, I spent five years taking care of my mom uh, mm -hmm. in her final years of her life. Yeah. And I think it really, that experience is, is my why now. Like it really anchored in me that realization that I was looking at my future Yes. Because she couldn't get out of a chair without assistance. Yes. She couldn't get off the couch without assistance. I mean, there was like these daily living activities that we take for granted right now. Yes. Were uh, uh, almost impossible for her. And the loss of, of dignity that she had, you know, if she ended up on the floor, it was always such a big ordeal. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just, it, it, it just made, it, it's that why that kind of drives me now. And Oh, 100%. I know exactly how you feel. My grandmother, you know, as much as my mom has been a motivating factor in keeping me going, keeping me excited about what I'm seeing happen in people, my grandmother, I, I watched the same thing happen with her. You know, the day that I said goodbye to her and I never saw her again, she was laying face down in a bed because she couldn't, she didn't have the strength. And if she had flipped over on her back, she would have stopped breathing. Right. That was, that was, it was like, okay, I'm going to hold your hand. I can't even hug you properly because you can't, I can't get to you because of all the apparatus and everything else you have in here. And I'm going to say goodbye to you here and I'm never going to see you again. She was, it was just devastating to watch that deterioration over the years. And if I, and I, you know, it's one of the few regrets I have in my life. I wish I had learned what I know now mm -hmm. years earlier. So I would have had a chance to actually help her go again. I love how you said that with dignity, um, mm -hmm. because there's nothing dignified about going that way. No. And, and, I, and I saw a post on social media yesterday, actually, that said, if you think life is hard now at 50, how is it going to be any different when you're 70? Yeah. If you're not doing something to change it right now. Yeah. Uh, right? You know, and that's uh, where a lot of people are at. A hundred percent. And I, I hear from people that are uh, 65, 70, 75, and yep. it's hard to get started on the journey. And there's always that thing where, Okay, I'm going to wait till January or I'm going to I'm going to take care of this next year or I'll wait till I retire and then I'll work on myself. But if you wait too long, I, I worry about people just getting to this point where where they're just not going to ever start. Um, and yeah. and I, I mean, not that yeah. I, I don't think it's ever too late. I think people, no, no matter where you are, just just start with something today. Yes. Yes. You know, um, and that's and, and that's where what my, my message I really want to drive home to people is it doesn't take a lot. No. To, to make a difference. So there's a there's a there's a, a concept, uh, uh, exercise science concept called specific adaptation to impose demand. OK, the said the said principle and in exercise science, the idea in this concept is that your body will adapt to anything you tell it to adapt to, okay? So if you have adapted to being sedentary and sitting down, your body is going to become adapted to being sedentary and sitting down and not doing anything. Anything that you do in the other direction is going to start adapting your body to being able to do those things. So if you're used to sitting on the couch all the time and you get up and you walk around your living room five times and you do that every day, your body is going to start expecting you to get up and walk around your body, 
your, or your living room five times every day. It is going to adapt to you doing that. That is a 1% increase in activity. But that 1% is now changed your body. Your body has physically changed. Your central nervous system has physically changed. Your expectations of what you're going to do in a day has physically changed. All of these things have changed just by you walking around your living room on a regular basis. Right? So it doesn't take a lot. It doesn't have to be join a program, go to a gym, get a trainer, figure out all these equipments, learn all these exercises. It's not that big. It's as big as you want the first step to be, and it doesn't have to be a jump across the comfort zone. Just one step across the line is all it takes. Yeah, I, I'm exercising in my bedroom. <laughs> there, that's all it takes. You start you know, doing a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just some weights and some bands and uh, and my piece of wall for the wall push-up. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it is amazing how quickly... Um, the progression has happened and the weights can get heavier. And, and yes. I, I'm just, I'm just really, you know, I'm really seeing a difference. I'm really enjoying it. Um, and, and it's the same with, I think people don't realize too, that with the diet change as well, uh, being carnivore, how quickly that can turn some things around, oh you know, my, yes. if, if you have different, uh, you know, I, if you have IBS or skin issues or, uh, acid reflux, those sorts of things, those mm -hmm. things can be resolved fairly Very quickly. quickly. Very quickly, you know, yes. It's really amazing. Yeah. The amount of people that have dramatic improvements in what we call health issues in the first 90 days is very high. Yeah. The percentage of people that go carnivore and within the first 90 days, their life is completely turned around and flipped upside down on its head is, is amazing. It's yes. fantastic. Yes, definitely. Um, so I hear this uh, term thrown around quite a bit uh, called functional fitness. C yeah. Can you explain that? Yeah, for sure. It's one of my favorite topics. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> so functional fitness um, is often is, is more of a buzzword these days than it used to be. Um, CrossFit really brought the term to the surface. And what it, sh what it is, the actual like definition and usage of functional fit fitness is doing things that improves your body's ability to do things. Okay. How complicated, how complicated yeah. was that, right? Yeah. <laughs> so the idea is we move in a lot of different ways. There's a lot of different things that our body can do. We, we can do things in different levels of intensity. We can do heavy things. We can do light things. We can do fast things. We can do long endurance things, right? So the, the idea of functional fitness is how do we build a training program around bringing all of these things into the program so that our body is able to perform in any situation and at any time? That's really what it's about. So it's kind of the way we say, okay, the world is very unpredictable. How can I use my training in a predictable fashion, in an area that I can control to allow my body to live in this world that is unpredictable? Okay. And that's really what functional fitness is about. Okay. So if your mom came to you today and yeah. she was... Well, I mean, you, you've had this experience because she did yep. have a day zero. Yep. Where, where should someone like that start who has been mm -hmm. sedentary? Yeah. Like, so what's the first thing? Yeah, there's the first thing. So uh, there are seven basic things that every, every human being should, should be able to do from a movement perspective. And these are the things that I like to start people off because without these, it doesn't matter the level of intensity. It doesn't matter what else you're doing. If you can't do these seven things then you're going to be limited in some way. Okay. And there's obviously there's modifications and there's scales and everyone's coming from a different place. But in general, these are what we call the seven essential movements. Okay. So everyone should be able to squat. If you're sitting in a chair, if you have to ever go to the bathroom, then you have to know how to squat. Yeah. If you want to do that, right. You should be able to bend over at the waist without hurting your back. You should be able to have the flexibility to do that. That's called the hip hinge, hinging at okay. your hips. You should be able to lunge. Right. If you can lunge, guess what that means? It means you can walk up and down stairs. Okay. Right. That's that's essentially a lunge. It's a shallower. It's a shallower lunge, and we think about when we think about lunging, but that's the movement. Uh, we should be able to push things. We should be able to pull things. 
We should be able to carry things and we should be able to control our torso and, and twist our body without damaging our spine. Okay. Right. So that's core strength and flexibility, the movement of our body in different directions without misaligning and, and damaging our spine. So those are the seven things that everybody should be able to do. And that's, again, that's simple stuff. That's get up and down out of your chair until getting up and down out of your chair is easy. Right. And then get up and down out of your chair while you're holding a gallon of milk. Okay. Right. That, that, it doesn't take a lot. Right. Walk up and down your stairs until walk up, walking up and down your stairs is easy. Then start walking up and down your stairs with a gallon of milk in your hand. Okay. Right? So it, it's, yeah. it's simple stuff. So squatting, hinging, lunging, pushing, pulling, carrying, and twisting. Those are the seven things that everybody should be able to do. Okay. Um, now, I know you have a book on Amazon. Mm-hmm. Are, yeah. Is that the type of thing that is covered in your book? It is in there, yes. There's a whole section. So the book that I have is the Ultimate Ketogenic Fitness book. Yeah. It's on Amazon. Yeah, we, we will uh, we link talk that about, below. Okay, we talk about mindset as the first section of okay. the book, and it's really just about you need to be in touch with why you're doing this, right? You have a very good why. I love you talking about, you know, watching your mother go through that process Mm -hmm. and that drives you. Everybody needs to find something that is emotional that they can connect to to keep them going. Okay. So that's the first thing we talk about mindset, how to set goals. What is your why? What are the things that, that, you know, that help keep you going? Things like that. The second set is fitness. Like what is, what is fitness? How is fitness and health related? What are the seven essential movements? What are the things that we need to look at when we talk about fitness? What is the difference between stamina and endurance? How does flexibility play a role in your fitness and your health? Mm-hmm. All those types of things. We talk about that. And then we talk about nutrition as well, where we talk about, you know, what are the benefits of eating an animal based diet? Mm-hmm. What are the benefits of removing carbs or plants? Why are plants potentially harmful for most people and many people? Mm-hmm. Um, what are the things that we can do when we look at really prioritizing? What are the aspects of nutrition that are important to worry about? over others so right. all of that stuff is in the book yeah awesome awesome so yeah we'll definitely have that that link below um can you uh like maybe talk about what a typical day of eating looks like for you for me yeah, yeah. so um i'm getting ready to eat some more it's a little late for me right now we're recording late but uh we had to get some shopping done so today for an example i had uh what did i have i had eight eggs for uh, late breakfast, early lunch. Then I had about half a pack of bacon. And I'm assuming that Coach Nat just got home because I just heard the door <laughs> open from the grocery store. So I will probably have some more eggs and probably half a pound or 10 ounces or so of ground beef or something like that. Okay. For, for so you keep meal. it pretty simple. Oh, I, I'm super simple. I'm easy when it comes to this stuff. Um, the most complicated thing I'll do, uh, I, I really like, and this is what I may do tonight, is my favorite meal right now, I'm kind of on a kick with this, is I'll ground up some beef in the frying pan uh, till it's you know all good and done. And then I'll take four, I usually do eight to 10 ounces of, of, of ground beef. I'll do three or four egg yolks. I dump the whites, I do three or four egg yolks, and then I put the meat in there and then mix it all up so the yolks are in with the eggs. Oh, it's so good. Yummy. It's so good with yeah. some Redmond sea salt on top. Yeah. It's fantastic. I yeah. love it. Oh, awesome. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's funny how we go through uh, phases because sometimes yeah. I do that too. It's like all I want to eat is uh, salmon, you know, for a week exactly. or something. And uh, yeah, I, I, I did like like six months ago. I did maybe eight months ago. I did like uh, three months where I could not get enough lamb. All uh, I wanted to eat was lamb. It was lamb, 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 lamb. And yeah. then all of a sudden one day it was like, I don't want lamb anymore. Yeah. Yeah. It just stopped. Yeah. <laughs> it was I really know. weird. I know. That, that happens to me too. Is there anything you want to talk about that, you know, if my questions haven't yeah. brought out? Yeah. Well, let's talk about real quick. And we can just, I just want to explain um, one of the, the things that I get a lot. And we hosted a conference earlier this year in the Baltimore, Maryland area. And one of the, the common themes in that, and I have a video, if you go to my, my YouTube channel, I have a video where I talk about where I talk about this, because I actually was going to talk about exercise science and some exercise things. Um, but then throughout the, the weekend, we had a lot of questions about 
there's so much information out there. How do I know what's right for me? That's a right? really good question because I get yeah. people asking me that as well. Who do I listen to? How do, do I, I know who's to, right? right? Yeah, exactly. You know, this one says that, that one says that. Yes, and uh, and often they conflict, right? Yes. This one's oh. saying one thing and, this one, and they're yes. totally in opposition, yes. theoretically, of each other. So I decided to change my talk at the conference and I talked about this, this idea. And the idea is principles over protocols. Principles will win every single time. So what happens is we hear information. There are a lot of people out there who are giving you specific answers mm -hmm. to non-specific problems. Okay? okay. PSMF versus high fat. Sardine fasts versus water fasts. Fasting, intermittent fasting versus OMAD versus uh, two mad versus uh, who knows whatever else is out there, yeah. right? Yeah. All of these different things about how we should be eating, how we should be exercising. You should be doing HIT. You should be doing weight training. You should be doing cardio. You should be doing uh, whatever it may be. Yeah. What we need to look at is of all of those things, it doesn't matter what you're talking about. Every single time, there is a core set of things about those programs, protocols, that work regardless of which one you pick okay right when we talk about fitness as long as you're moving some kind of weight as long as you're moving it often and as long as you're moving properly so you don't hurt yourself you're going to see some benefit i don't care if it's doing crossfit if it's doing weight training if it's doing bar okay or yoga right so those concepts translate through all of the different protocols when we talk about nutrition i don't care which nutrition guideline or program you follow you need to get the nutrition that you need nutrient mm -hmm. density mm -hmm. it needs to be bioavailable mm -hmm. and it needs to help support your natural satiety okay if those things are in place then any other protocol that you pick is going to work for you to some degree yeah. may not work for you forever it may not be the right one maybe there's another one that fits your lifestyle a little bit better but so understanding what the principles are behind these things and why they actually work because of the principles. It, keto didn't work because keto is a special thing. Right. Keto worked, carnivore worked because it supported nutrient density, bioavailability, and satiety to a greater extent than the diet you were eating before you started keto or carnivore. Yes. Right? So that's where the change was made. It wasn't because your diet had a name. It was because your diet supported proper nutrition principles. Yes. Better than the one that you were on before. And that's what I want people to understand is figure out what your context is. The context of me and my goal, so I'll tell you right now, my goal when it comes to fitness and nutrition is to help people improve their quality of life and physical independence. Okay? That is the goal. You're, I don't talk to people about weight loss. Because I don't care if you lose weight if it doesn't help you play with your grandkids. Right. Right. I care. I care that you can play with your grandkids because if I can get you to play with your grandkids, I can guarantee you're going to lose weight. Yes. Right. That's how that's how it really yeah. works in the real world. Yes. So the, the, so there's a lot of different people out there talking about all their solutions and these different things. Understand where they're coming from. Dr. Sivas is going to say something different than Dr. Mm -hmm. Boz. Dr. Yeah. Barry is going to say something different than I'm going to say. But guess what? For the people that we're talking to and for the backgrounds that we're all coming from, none of us are wrong. I, right? I, I love this because the labels kind of drive me insane. Oh, my gosh. Yes. I, I, I mean, sometimes I just almost can't stand it. And, and I, I just like, well, I'm sure you get comments, too, but I, I get I get the weirdest comments where people will just hone in on something yeah, and, all the time. Yeah. OK, so uh, we probably don't even have to talk about that. But <laughs> <laughs> all the time. And I try not to get because it's it's, it's really prevalent and there, and it's I've been through this. So I understand mm -hmm. where I understand where a lot of people are coming from. When you learn something that's new and exciting and it's changed your life, you want to share it. And as far as your experience is to that point, it's the only thing you know, so it's the yeah. only thing that's gonna work. Yes. Now, as you go into the process, I did this when I first became a CrossFit coach. When I first learned about CrossFit, became a coach, got my first certificate and started coaching people, 
everything I talked about, everything I did. CrossFit is the only thing that anybody should be doing. It's the best thing out there. Yeah. There was no room for acknowledgement that there's a lot of things out there that can work for people. What are the core things about CrossFit that are working? Because those things can work for other people in other ways as well. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And the same thing with carnivore. When I first learned about carnivore, everything's carnivore. No one should ever eat a plant again. They're the worst thing ever, you know, until I realized, well, that doesn't work for everybody. Not right. everybody can sustain completely cutting out plants for the rest of their life. Some people like the freaking Brussels sprouts. Yeah. yeah. Okay. If it doesn't bother them, it doesn't cause them to be sick. Who's to say that's wrong? Yeah. Right. So there's, there's something in all of these things that works for each person and the dogma behind where people come from, I understand, but I think mm -hmm. we also really need to pay attention to what's working and focus on the working piece not the name of what we're doing. Yes, Thanks. I, I I agree, and 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 you know there are times now, and I I don't know who I heard it from, but it, it's something that I now will answer the odd comment with when, mm -hmm. you know, I've I've uh, I've used some oregano or something like that, and <laughs> I know I know, and that's not carnivore, and I you know I just I like to say. I'm not. I'm not trying to be a perfect car carnivore. I'm just. I'm trying to be healthy. <laughs> I'm just trying yeah. to be healthy. Yeah. And Absolutely. <sighs> and that's. And that's where. I, that that attitude does drive me crazy. I don't mind if you have that for yourself, but trying to put your label on other other people's decisions mm -hmm. drives me absolutely. That will fire me yeah. up. That's more yeah. than anything else. Yeah. Right. You're not living my life. You can't. Don't tell me how to do what I'm doing for me. Yes. Right. Just because I add oregano or I eat some slap. I love slap your mama, by the way. It's like the best seasoning in the world. I love it. Um, I put it on everything when I have it. I'm out of it right now and I'm sad. Um, you know, I put slap your mama. I use Redmond sea salt, seasoning salt, flavored salt. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. I'll have, oh my gosh, I'll have a tomato. Right. Who cares? Yeah. There's I, no I carnivore police. Okay, if you feel like you need to be 100% strict meat only for your journey, that is absolutely fine. There is nothing and nobody who can tell anybody else different. Yeah, I agree. So, I, yeah, yeah. I, I think people just have to, I mean, and, and I think when, when people are following several different YouTubers, say, mm -hmm. um, I think you know, one of the things that I would like them to know is that each of those YouTubers are sharing their own personal journey. Exactly. I mean, that's what they have done. And it may or may not be right for you. And that's why I like to follow a wide variety of people, because I, even if I completely disagree with this person or that person, there's always something that you can learn from it. Every you time. Know, some yes. little Absolutely. tidbit even. Yep. So. Yep. Yeah. And just so you know, I'll just throw this out there. What we're talking about right now, I have a book that is being reviewed right now. I just finished editing and this is the topic. Really? It is a, it is a walkthrough of how I look at this whole process and how I break down. These are the options that I have. This is the person that I'm working with. How do I figure out what this person needs and what options match to their goals? Okay. Right? That's what this is about. The, it's about principles over protocols. It's my method for evaluating all the information that's out there and how do we figure out what's going to work best for the individual person. So hopefully it's a roadmap for every single person to say there's all this information. How do I break this information down and figure out where I'm at and which of these pieces of the puzzle I need to focus on? Okay, so is this is this a book that's coming out at some point? It's a book that's coming out. I'm, it's oh, it's in awesome. editing right now. I just finished a, a round of editing. It's being content reviewed by a few people right now okay. that I respect in the space. I'm hoping to get something back. So if all goes well, we're looking maybe middle of next year. It'll okay. Come out. Cool. Well, that, that sounds that yeah. sounds amazing. Wow, you're you're uh, becoming quite the author. Will <laughs> it be on Amazon? It will definitely be on Amazon, cool. and I am surprised at how much I have enjoyed writing, being a kid, hating writing growing right, up. I don't know right. where this writing passion has come from, but I <laughs> love writing right now. <laughs> That's wonderful. Um, okay, so where can people, buy, like where are you most often? Mm -hmm. what, what, um, uh, if you want to get me most of the time right now, it's on Instagram. So Coach okay. Bronson on Instagram. Um, okay. My website is coachbronson.com. My YouTube, 
I'm putting some I'm putting content out there fairly regularly in the form of shorts. I'm not doing many long form videos right now. Okay. Um, I'm actually, here's another thing that's happening. I'm actually getting my master's in exercise science and nutrition right now. Really? So that's kind of you, another thing that I'm working on. Yeah. You are busy. I've got a, little, a few things going on. Yes. Um, so that's happening. So my content creation has dropped significantly. Um, so yeah, so YouTube is Coach Bronson. Pretty much if you just type in Coach Bronson on the internet, Okay. Well, something of mine should pop up. Well, we will put all of, if you send me those links, we will put okay. all of your contact links below awesome. in Thank the video. You. So yeah. yeah, for sure. So do you have anything in closing that you'd like to say? Um, we touched on it at the beginning and I want to reiterate for everyone okay. listening, since most of your, your, your viewers are women, yes. right? You said 50 and up. Yes. Um, the key to you taking the next step is believing that you can. That's that's all it is. Yes. Just try. Don't yeah. be afraid to try. The worst thing that can happen is you stay where you are. Okay? So just try. Get out there. It takes 1% effort. It doesn't, mm -hmm. you know, we talk about get outside your comfort zone. Nothing, nothing you want in life is inside your comfort zone. You already have everything that's there. Right. You want more, you got to get outside your comfort zone. Yeah. That doesn't mean you have to take a running leap across the line right just take one step over just one step outside your comfort zone is going to be better than staying inside so find that one thing that you feel like okay that is something i can visualize myself doing on a regular basis it's not too far outside my comfort zone it will be a challenge but i think i can do that go do that thing okay right confidence is a habit it doesn't come until you start doing things where you can prove to yourself that you can. So if you want to be more confident, if you want to have strength, if you want to have physical independence, exercise is an opportunity to reinforce the habit of strength, independence, and confidence every single day. Wow. Okay. So if you want to be, if you want to have that feeling about yourself, just exercise and reinforce it every day. I'm, I'm confident, I'm strong, I'm independent. I'm gonna go work out. Put that as your mantra and you're gonna change so many things about your life. I love that. I, I, I really love that. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to my routine tomorrow morning because I'm gonna think about what you just said. Good, I think good. it's going I so. to be, uh, yeah, I, I will. I think it's going to be amazing. It's a whole different way to approach it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, I've really enjoyed our talk and I want to thank you so much for agreeing to come on my channel well, I'm here. glad you asked me to be on. I'm very and happy about this. I, I look forward to us talking again in, in the new year. Um, yeah, you know, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. So I think that um, we've we're at about an hour right now. So thank you everybody for watching this uh, program today. And thank you, Coach Bronson, for being here. Look forward to talking to you again. And uh, I wish everybody a good night. And, and think about some of these things that uh, we have talked about today. All the links will be below where you can find Coach Bronson. I'm going to link his channel and the video that I saw with his mom that really inspired me and I'm sure it's going to inspire some of you as well. So have a good night everybody and thanks again Bronson. Thanks for having me. Okay.